Center. Oh, 
Ну, Brother, you're supposed to go 45 degrees. Stay there, brothers. Okay. Bismillah. Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All right. 
Um, give me one second. Uh, we're going to open the program in prayer. I just have to share uh, this video to my pages so that it'll be accessible. Okay. Uh, share. No, share. Uh, okay, give me a second, y'all. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Okay. And I have to share it to my main page. That was to my Elijah S. Muhammad Ba page. Oh. No. No, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. No. Okay, come on now, come on now. All right, I'll tell you what. Give me one second, y'all. One second, one second, one second. One second. Everybody, okay, I hope y'all ready to give your comments. Just have to go live. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so uh, everybody on my two pages, y'all should be able to see this now. Hopefully, you are uh, tuning in. I'm going to open this up in prayer. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مقدوب عليهم ولا ضالين آمين. Okay, thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in. Um, I've already received an inbox, and this is an inbox of. Brother Hafiz himself sharing some very timely words with us. Man born of a woman must one day soon die. So it don't make a difference if God give us an extra 15 or 51. We come from eternity. We're going to return to eternity. But we got to make the best of the time we have here. And the best of the time is filling your mind, your heart, your spirit, your soul with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, culture, refinement, and the high signs of life. Love, peace, and happiness. Thank you, Brother Eric J. Muhammad, for sharing that video with me. So, in the name of Allah, the Magnificent, the Merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah. And I'll be a witness that Muhammad is his messenger. So already we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Eric. Alaikum salam. Yes, sir. So you're, you're on live. 
Yes, sir. You can share your experiences with us, beloved. What's that, brother? I said you can share your experiences your, about, with Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know you have a lot, brother. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear exactly what you said, but I said, brother, you're on live, so you can share. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's what the program is about. <laughs> So, call I'm you, doing. call you direct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Well, salam. Thank you so much, beloved. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, anybody who wants to come and call, uh, you can call me on Messenger, and share your your stories and your experience with Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. I'll start it off until y'all get ready. Um, again, you can send me an audio in the inbox, or you can send me a video, and I will uh, share it here. Uh, on Facebook. So, um, uh, you know, I, from what I understand, Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad was, was born in, I believe, 1963. Um, I know his birthday, according to his Facebook page, was September 20th. And um, uh, he was definitely raised in, in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, he was, um, you know, he, he used to share with us a lot of his, uh, background, you know, his personal background with the, with us, he, you know, because I mean, we were his family, his extended family. And, um, uh, one of the things is that, you know, he, he grew up on the, the mean streets of Brooklyn. Um, and, uh, you know, he later adopted to the teachings of the 5% nation. And then, um, uh, he joined the Nation of Islam under the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, under the guidance of our student minister at that time, Abdul Kareem Muhammad, who is one of the founding fathers of Mosque Number no. 7 in the second rise of the Nation of Islam. He is definitely the pioneer of the second rise of the, the Nation of Islam. Um, in, in, in establishing Mosque Number no. 7, and we have his picture up at Mosque Number no. 7 up until this very day. So Brother Kevin at that time, his name was Brother Kevin, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, I'm just giving you the history, you know, so he, you know, uh, Kevin Ross was his name, and he accepted uh, the teachings of the Ambilaj Muhammad, coming from Brother Abdul Kareem Muhammad, and he became Kevin X. And uh, so there was a whole life before I, I met him that he had um, in the early days of, of reestablishing Temple Number no. 7, uh, before we named it Mosque Number no. 7. Uh, it was Temple Number no. 7 still. And um, I remember mentioning the Boiling Room crew, all y'all brothers who was a part of that Boiling Room, room crew, I hope you will call in and share some experiences. And uh, so when I met him, it was, you know, I was about 15 years old when um, I started becoming active, reactivated in the Nation of Islam. Um, uh, you know, my, my parents were in the Nation of Islam. I was in the Nation of Islam as a child. But when the, when the nation fell, you know, I had to be fished back into the mosque just like everybody else who uh, joined the nation during that time. So... Um, you know, I became active again in 86 and, and, you know, from the time I became um, active again, brother, uh, Kevin at that time, or brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad was there. And, um, you know, he was a young, slim, tall, uh, assistant minister to brother Abdul Allah Muhammad and brother Abdul Allah Muhammad would affectionately call him super K every time, um, <laughs> Uh, brother, you know, Abdul Afis, who was Brother Kevin at that time, so he would call him K, Super K. And every time we would introduce him, um, you know, he was like, thank you, Brother Super K. So um, there are many tapes out there. I think I have some here. I was trying to dig them up for you, but I was unsuccessful, um, uh, you know, of him introducing Brother Abdul Allah Muhammad in those early days of um, uh, 80, 1986 at 545 Gates Avenue. Now at that time, that was the only temple in the city. So there was no 7C at that time. There was just Mosque number seven 
545 Gates Avenue. That was it. No 7C like we have today. Mosque number 7 in Harlem. Mosque number 7C in Brooklyn. The only mosque in the city was in Brooklyn. And uh, when I came in after Abdul Kareem Muhammad, there was Abdul Allah Muhammad. And I came in under his teaching and tutelage. And uh, uh, Brother Kevin was the assistant minister. So, um, 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 so you know, I got to know him. Um, I, they, they put me to work right away, even though I had not wrote my letter yet because I was born in the nation. They were like, well, you know, you, you, you just fall in with the FOI. I was going to FOI class. There was no processing class or nothing. I just went straight to FOI class with no, you know, not being registered or anything. I soldiered just like everybody, all the other FOI. Went on details <laughs> when the minister went to speak at uh, Detroit or anywhere on the East Coast. I was doing security. I was on the detail even before I wrote my letter. And Brother Hafiz was always there. You know, we would, it was a handful of us at that time. I mean, uh, at that time, the brotherhood had dwindled after Abdul Kareem Muhammad. He, who, he was a strong personality. When uh, he was no longer the minister, all the brothers that came in under him, a lot of them, they, you know, they stopped being active. They didn't stay active under Abdullah. So it was literally like uh, 12 disciples. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was just like a dozen brothers, like a dozen of us who were like active, you know, uh, in, at, at that time, like really, really active. Um, and I would say no more than 20, you know, so we were just like a handful at the time. So anytime we did anything as FOI, we all were there, brother, brother. Kevin at that time, he was a soldier. You know, he was in the ministry, but he was a soldier. And even to the day Allah took him, may Allah be pleased with him. He was a, a, a student minister, but he was a soldier, soldier. You know, so he he was he wasn't one one of those briefcase carrying student ministers that was uh, you know too too uh, you know prissy as they say, <laughs> too good to get their hands dirty or whatever. You know. Uh, no, he was out. He was in the field with 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 the rest of us. So um, there, there's there's so many aspects um, of of him that we could talk about. But in you know in reflecting on him, I noticed there was a characteristic about him that um, that when I studied Islamic society, um, I said I, I thought to myself like he fit the description of this very important. Um, role that is played in Islamic society. And that role is the role of a Qardi, a Qardi. Um, a Qardi is the, like a judge of the affairs. So he was a Qardi. He was a imam. You know, he, he, he did the funerals. He did the weddings. You know, he led the prayers, you know, but he was also a Qardi. Uh, he was a, a counselor you know, of, of, of people's marriages and, you know, male-female relationships. But how I first got to know this aspect of this brother, and again, this was a gift from Allah. This man's counsel make anybody who graduated with a degree in counseling look like a fool. You know, they, I, and I, I spoke and sat with so-called counselors. They have nothing, nothing on Abdul Hafiz Muhammad because he got his from Allah. He got this from God. You know, this was something that a gift that was given to him. So how I first uh, came into uh, um, experiencing that part of him, the core was one day me and a brother, uh, we had a dispute. As always, you know, uh, there's always disputes over money, you know, all throughout human history. So me and his brother, we were best friends and he had borrowed some money from me. So, um, you know, so, and, it, you know, he said he'd give it to me on a certain day, and it was due. So we were at FOI class, and during FOI class, brother, brother uh, Kevin at the time, Abdul Hafiz, um, you know, he was giving a demonstration to us of how to sit post. Again, he was a student minister. He was, in the, he was always in the ministry, but he was always a soldier. So during the class, he was showing us how to, you know, properly sit post, you know, and he, but he was a funny guy. So, so class was over, right? We, we had closed out and everything in prayer and, you know, everybody had left the room. So I, I found the brother, um, 
And, uh, you know, and I was, we, we were talking. So everybody was going. I said, brother, you know, it's time. I mean, you're supposed to have my money. He was like, okay, well, can I give you a hundred now? I think it was a hundred or two hundred dollars. Like, can I give you a hundred now? Give you a hundred. I was like, no, brother, brother. I was like, brother, you know, now back in the eighties, like a hundred, two hundred dollars was a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Especially to somebody who was like, like me, who was only like 17 years old. I'm like, that's a lot of money. I'm like, brother. You said you was going to pay today. You know, we, you, you know, you, please pay, pay me right now. It's like, all right, can I give you singles? I was like, brother, I didn't give you all those singles. I just gave you two bills. So we were having this little dispute over this, over this, this money. Now, unbeknownst to us, we thought we were the only ones in the room. After the lecture hall had cleared out, brother Abdul Hafiz, brother Kevin at that time, was still sitting there in post position, and, you know, he was on our blind side because if you know uh, anything about the lecture hall on Fifth Avenue, you got to make a right turn in order to exit. So we were by the exit and we didn't we didn't know he was still sitting there and he was listening to our whole conversation and our whole dispute. So while we're talking, we hear somebody say, Salam Alaikum. And we turned around like, oh, oh, like, where, like, where's this voice coming from? And he walks up and he was like, OK, brother. So, yes. You know, so then he just automatically, and he wasn't even a minister of the mosque. He was just, you know, one of our big brothers, you know, seasoned brothers. And, and he just automatically right there, boom, assumed the role as Cordy. And he began to intervene in our, our, our little dispute. And he gave me a judgment, you know, right on the spot. He gave me, he gave a judgment. He said, brother, you know, you, you, you know, you promised him to pay him at this time. And you're supposed to pay him the same manner, in the same manner that he gave you the loan. So right then and there, the brother said, yes, sir. And again, he wasn't even a student minister, but he just had that moral authority, you know, and we respected him for that. And so the brother said, all right, and he paid me my money the way I, I wanted to be paid. Finish. And he was, you know, so that, that was one this dispute. But I want to share another one that happened later on. Um, you know, it, and uh, this was a very interesting one. It was, again, another brother. We were close friends. We were, you know, we, we were FOI. We are brothers. We are friends. And uh, we, had, we had business dealings with each other. And, um, you know, uh, um, and in our business dealings, he owed me, you know, some, uh, some unpaid money, some unpaid wages. So, um, so, you know, and every time I would ask him for the money, he would say, you know, no, this is not brother Afis, this is somebody else. And, uh, the brother would say no. And, you know, he, you know, I, I'll come back this week and come back. So he was giving me the runaround. So what happened was he, you know, to make a long story short, he was a wholesaler. So I said, okay, I'm gonna find a way to get him back. I'll, I'll get him. So what I did, I took some products out on consignment. So since he owed me money. I took the amount of product that was equal to the money. So I was like, okay, give me this amount of product. He was like, all right, so you owe me this. I was like, okay, yeah, I owe you, all right. So I went, I sold, I made the money. He was calling me, oh, brother, when you gonna pay me? I was like, when am I gonna pay you? I'm gonna pay you no mind. You owe me money and you're asking me for money. So the brother became, you know, infuriated, infuriated. You know, like, brother, no, 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 you're supposed to give me my money, da, 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 I was like, man, whatever. Ha, gotcha, right? Finish, right? So, I go to the mosque the next Sunday. And, you know, brother Hafiz, you know, said, said brother Elijah, I, I need to talk to you, brother. You, you, come here. So, the brother I had to dispute with, he was sitting there. And so, I told my side of the story. This is brother, brother... Hafiz, the Cordy. Now, mind you, he didn't have this title, but he he performed this function as a judge of our disputes. And so we, you know, so I told my side of the story. I plead, uh, gave my case, and then the brother gave his case. And I know I was in the right. I felt I was in the right. So the brother, again, he got infuriated, and he actually threatened. You know, he was like, "Yo," he was like, "I'm gonna take this to the streets with you know on you." You know, he was from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, it's like, like, Brother Elijah, you want me to take this to the streets on you? And I was like, you, and I'm, I'm looking at him like, and he was serious. Like, he was ready to harm me over a couple of hundred dollars. And I couldn't believe this. I'm like, I'm like, brother, I'm like, as far back as we go. He's like, man, I don't care about none of that. 
you owe me this amount of money. If you don't pay me, I'm going to take it to the streets with you. So Brother Hafiz was sitting there. And Brother Hafiz was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Brother Hafiz saw that this brother was dead, you know, <laughs> serious about shedding blood. So he appealed to me because I guess I'm the more humble brother, you know. Uh, so he was like, like Brother Elijah, like Brother Elijah, Brother Elijah. <laughs> you know, Brother Hafiz, <laughs> those who know how he talks, like Brother Elijah, look, pay him his money. <laughs> Just pay him his money. You know, and we'll we'll work out the other part another time, brother. You know, so in other words, he was telling me, look, be the bigger brother. And for the sake of brotherhood, you know, even though you feel he's being unjust, just give him his money, you know. So I'm like, okay, you know, we're not going to shed no blood over a couple of hundred dollars, you know. So I'm like, all right. So I gave him the money, you know, no problem. But in my, my heart, I always felt like, you know, this brother... What's wrong? I, I, I've always, to, to this day, I felt like, you know, I would have my, had the right to take that money back from him because he owed me money already. So I, I gave him the money, no problem. Now, to show you how the wisdom, you know, and, uh, the, you know, and, and saving face for the sake of brotherhood worked out, that same brother, that same brother, may Allah be pleased with him, he, before he passed away, he was sick in the hospital. Now, as much as much as I can have a problem with someone, if you're sick, that that problem means nothing. You know, I went to visit the brother in the hospital and he looked like the way I looked in 2018. He had became like a skeleton. You know, he was once, you know, of nice size and he became like super skinny. Like, you know, those who saw me in 2018, you know what I'm talking about. And so I, I saw the brother, I made prayers, you know, uh, at his bedside, he was he was unconscious when I made my prayers, but I just went there, I visited him, I made my prayers, and I left, you know, and even though we still had that unsettled financial dispute, I still offered my prayers, and I, I left. As Allah would have it, that same brother, Allah allowed him to come back for a certain period of time, you know, and he, when he came back to life for just a short period of time, he came to the mosque and he was real skinny. I mean, he was, wow, he was super skinny, but he, he came looking for me and he came straight to me. And in his own Brooklyn way, <laughs> y'all Brooklyn brothers, y'all don't know how to apologize, man, but I love y'all. 7C, I love y'all, man. But he was so Brooklyn. He didn't know how to apologize. You know what I'm saying? So in his own Brooklyn way, he was like, Brother Elijah, I just want you to know, you know, I, I don't have no, I don't have hate for nobody, man. I don't have hate for nobody in my heart. I just want you to know that, man. I just want you to know I don't have hate for nobody. That was his way of saying, brother, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I, you know, I guess he was saying like, I'm not harboring any ill feelings because of our falling out in our business affairs. And he was just, that was his way of apologizing. And I, and I understood that and I accepted it. And a few weeks later, that brother passed away. I'm not talking about Brother Hafiz. I'm talking about another one of our brothers. But Brother Hafiz, in his guidance, in his counsel, in his judgment, even though I thought it was unjust, however, in the end, the brother, me and the brother was able to reconcile before he passed away. And had Brother Hafiz not made that decision to save the brotherhood and see the brotherhood above money, me and that brother probably would have never reconciled and he would have went to the grave with, you know, not reconciling with me. So I thank Allah for the, the guidance and counsel of Brother Afis. And I'm telling you, I could give you so many stories, but I don't want to be selfish. I want to hear from you. I see Brother Sabir Muhammad on the line. Are you ready to, to call in, brother? You know, I, I, I have you here. Do you want me to call you? Uh, anybody, if you want to uh, join in, just... You know, call me on Messenger, and I'll put you in this conversation. Uh, if you're having problems getting in, uh, let me know. Say something. You know, give me a signal. And I'll... Sir. Yes, sir. Give me a signal. Yes, sir. And let me turn this down, because I know it's a delay here. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir. You're on. Praise be to Allah. Uh... Thank you, brother. Um, it's a blessing that you're actually doing this, you know, because a lot of the older 
soldiers right from the beginning uh, when we was in Brooklyn, 1110 Eastern Parkway. Uh, that's where I met Brother brother Kevin and Brother Hafiz, as we know him now today. It was, excuse me, hold one second. It yes, was sir. July 10th, 1980. Mm. That's when I first heard the minister mm. at Robert Treats Hotel in Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And two weeks later, mm. we're at Parkside Plaza is where the orientation and a lot of the believers were just coming in for the rebuilding of the Nation of Islam at that time. Mm. And several weeks after that, we ended up in Brooklyn, mm. uh, actually building that mosque. And that's where we found a bond and a family, as you call it, the boiler crew <laughs> back in the days. <laughs> You know, uh, Brother Allen, Brother Henry, Brother mm. Nathaniel. Mm. I mean, there's so many brothers. Brother Arthur X, mm. who was the brother that actually brought me into the uh, to the nation. Mm. Uh, uh, Captain Alpha. Mm. You know, I mean, mm. so many brothers mm. and sisters. Mm. I mean, it, it was a family. Yes. I mean, true, true family. And Brother Kevin part of that family and all of us that was there i mean it was a time where true brotherhood that i felt at that that time mm. you could not push us out of the mosque mm. after foi class or mm. even after uh after uh mass on sunday mm. or the temple as we called it at that time the sisters would go into the kitchen and they would cook and we actually all sat down and break bread to wee hours in the evening this is long after class is done or after the temple is over you know you literally had to just chase us out of the mosque it's just how close we were mm. brother mm. kevin and i you know were very very close mm. he's very close with my family he eulogized my father when my father passed, mm. he did the wedding for my brother, mm. brother Amin, who is your uh, mm. regional uh, investigator there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've always been close. Actually, I was just sitting here this evening uh, re-listening to uh, a tape of the minister when the minister was here back in 2010 when his subject was the true uh, Israelites mm -hmm. and here in Atlanta. And Brother Hafiz stayed in my home mm -hmm. that weekend. You mm -hmm. know, my brother had called me and said the uh, brother student minister needed a place to stay. Mm -hmm. I had just purchased my home. Mm -hmm. I said, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I have a room for him. And mm -hmm. wherever he's at, just let me know. I will pick him up. and. Mm -hmm. And that was that, you know, he knew that, <clears throat> excuse me, any time, any time he wanted to come to Atlanta, he, he knew he, he did not have to check into a hotel. He checked into my home mm. and it was be always to open for him. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm full. You know, yes, there's so much that I can say about my brother, you know, with tears, you know, after hearing is passing, you know, it's, it, uh, it's, it's hurt. It, it does hurt. Yes. You know, yes, it, yes. you know, it's, it's like, you know, when brother Allen, when he passed, it felt right. the same way, brother Nathaniel senior, yes. when he passed, yes. you know, yes. you know, we, we, we were so connected yes. as a family, yes. uh, you know, all of us, you know, you mm. know, we've we done things, we've done things together, That's right. you know, That's right. it's, it's just that much love that we have, but you know, mm. I, there's so much that I can say, brother. You're saying a lot. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I know that there are others that, that pretty much would like to bear with this too, our beloved brother as well. So I'll, I'll let it go with that, man. Brother Sabir, thank, thank you so you. much, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for calling in and sharing, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Sir.
That's Brother Sabir. I, I, I know that brother for a long time. I knew him uh, probably just as long as I knew Brother brother Kevin, Brother Hafiz. And, um, you know, these were my big brothers. Again, I was a teenager when I came back to the nation. So these are all my big brothers, Brother Sabir, Brother Abdul Hafiz, you know, uh, all the brothers he mentioned, Brother Allen, Brother Dranya, Brother Jason X, you know, all, all my, my big brothers, man. Brother Barry, uh, the other, not Milkman Barry, there's another brother Barry, um, you know, so many. Anybody else you want to call in, please call me in, call in on Messenger. Um, you know, we want to hear your story. We want to, uh, we want you to share your experiences about our great brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to read. Uh, you know, just call in whenever you're ready. Call in on Messenger. Don't let, like I said, don't leave me hanging out here. Because I'm, I'm a talk, you know. You're like, Brother Elijah, I just saw the program. I'm like, okay, well, why didn't you join in? Now, you, you don't have to do a video call. You can do audio. It's okay. But just don't leave me hanging out here, okay? So, uh, <laughs> let me, uh, while I wait for y'all to call in, while I wait for y'all to call in, uh, our poet, uh, some of y'all know Sister Lisa. She's a, a well-known poet in the community. I hope you call in, Sister Lisa, and um, uh, share some words and share some beautiful poetry. She said, "Assalamu alaikum, family. Through the life, sacrifices, and mighty work of beloved bro Hold on, brother, peace, my brother, peace, my brother, peace, brother Victor Cherry Gotti, brother. This is one of our brothers um, who did a lot of work in the community with myself and, of course, brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad." Uh, brother student minister, uh, brother brother Conrad Muhammad, the brother's been around. He's well known in the Harlem community. And, uh, you know, brother, I, I knew you was going to call. I just want to thank you. And I, I, wanna, I just want to show you, I, I still got your book, brother. <laughs> I still got your book. And, <laughs> and um, brother, thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to open the floor for you, brother, and just say what you want uh, about our, our beloved Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Thank you, brother, for oh, man. coming in the conversation. Uh, brother Hafiz, man, you know, that, that, that brother was a brother who you know you can stand by and go to battle with. Mm -hmm. You know, Me and her had a love, what are you doing relationship. Not a love, hey, it was a love, what are, what are you doing? Because I used to just always just get on his nerve and push him to be better and push him to do better. And then he'd get on my nerve and, hey, brother, you should be doing this way and that way. So I enjoy every minute, every second that I share with him because it was always about the development and the, and the elevation of black and brown people. I remember I bought uh, 100 Bloods to the, uh, to the mosque and everything, and he was so appreciative of that. And he gave them, you know, the word from the Honorable Lewis Minister Farrakhan. And, I mean, everything that we did was, was awesome. I mean, the preventing and stopping the violence in the community of Harlem. Because it was a transition for me because I've done a lot of work with uh, Conrad Tilly at that time, Conrad Muhammad. So when somebody came and they said, I'm Minister Kevin, you know, I'm like, come on, man. I don't feel like, we're Conrad, you know. <laughs> and he just ushered himself. Because he was very charismatic, you know, the way he talked, he was just smooth with it, and he had confidence with everything he said, and I loved that, because that's what I also loved about Conrad, you know, mm -hmm. and like I said, we've done some great work in Harlem, me and that brother, and he is going to definitely be greatly missed, you know, in the Nation of Islam, and also in the community of Harlem, and I know they're missing him as well in Brooklyn, because he's a brother that... He's just he's just unique. His voice, mm -hmm. his 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 uh his presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody have their uniqueness and mm -hmm. their feel and what they do in life. And he's one of the brothers that was definitely unique and have his own cloth and pattern, how he patterned himself. And today I had the privilege to listen to his uh historical um um, testimony of how he grew up and came up and I found out wow he has so much in common and that was a whole side that I never even knew about so you know may Allah be pleased with his family may Allah be pleased with his loved ones and, and, and everybody man and I'm just grateful and thankful that I knew him 
you know, as a person, and most of all, as a minister of Mars number seven, and also the minister of our community. That's right. We had a lot of reverence. That's right. But he was the minister of our community. There you go. There you go. Thank you, brother, 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 Victor Cherry Gotti, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you yes, so sir. much, brother. Appreciate your contribution yes, to this conversation, brother. Bless. I'll talk to you later. Peace, brother. Peace. Yes. So there you have it, brother. That's a brother uh, from, from our community, uh, well-known in Harlem. And, you know, uh, again, the brother said he brought 100 bloods to the mosque. I remember that, um, you know, uh, reaching out to our people in the gangs. And Brother Hafiz was there to, to give the brothers the word. Anybody else, you call on them when you're ready. Let me read Sister, finish reading Sister Lisa A. Muhammad. I hope you will call in, Sister, but I'm going to read your words. Uh, uh, our great poet, Sister. Um, Assalamu alaikum family, through the life, sacrifices, and mighty work of beloved brother, student minister, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, Allah united hearts, and made us all sisters and brothers unified by the life-saving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as exemplified and taught to us by the honorable brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan. I am forever grateful to Allah. May the fire of the mission continue to burn brightly in our lives for the benefit of ourselves and our people. At this time and always, I offer fervent prayers of strength, blessings, comfort, consolation, protection, and peace to Sister Loray his children and family, as well as you and your family. Long live Muhammad. Allah Wakba. Thank you, Sister Lisa. A. Muhammad, thank you so much, so much for those beautiful, powerful, and uplifting words about our student minister, Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Anyone else? The line is open. The floor is open. Uh, again, if you want to inbox me a comment, you can inbox me. If you want to, you know, uh, do a, a, a pre-recorded video, you could do that and leave it in my inbox or just call. Call and, and speak live to the community. Uh, we're waiting on you. I know you're out there. Come on now. Don't have me up here rambling now because I'll start telling another story and then I got to get cut off. You know, and as brother said, you know, um, our brother Sabir, he, he, you know, he did the funerals of a lot of our family. He did my mother's uh, Janaza. He, you know, he did my brothers, my older brothers, Janaza. Um, you know, uh, and he did it for so many in the community. And, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's something that, you know, um, because of this, you know, current situation with the COVID-19, um, uh, we may not be able to stand in ranks for him the way we want to and give him the proper burial, but hopefully Allah will make a way will make a way for at least uh, some of us to be there and represent and to stand and, and offer prayers, you know, for our brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad and, and give him the proper burial. We pray Allah, you know, make a way and open up a way in spite of all the chaos and backlog of um, burials, uh, 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 ceremonies that are taking place. Um, so, uh, you know, so we, you know, I wanted to do this to just uh, open the floor for us to speak. So anyone else out there, all of you, I, I see you. I know, don't let me call your name, please. I know you got stories. I know you got, you know, uh, things to say about Abdul Afis Muhammad. I'm waiting. I'm listening. I'm listening. Call me. Come on now. Are oh, y'all just going to leave me hanging? Inbox me. Brother James T. Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. You you want you want to join in the conversation, Sister Erica Muhammad? Salam, wa alaikum salam. Yes, you're welcome, Brother Mark Winkler. Thank you, Sister Halima Tuba, Brother Robert Shabazz. Thank you, our brothers. Feel free to call in. I see y'all on here, Brother Santana. Salam alaikum. I see you out there, Brother Santana. <laughs> Brother Clifford Goldstein. Let me read your comments. Oh, man, I, I, I turned the camera the wrong way. Hold on. Y'all looking at my cups and my coffee. Oh, here you go. Uh, brother Clifford Goldstein says, Thank you, Brother Elijah. We the believers in our nation needed this, and we thank you. May Allah... Let me see. Bless you and your... Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Clifford Goldstein. Oh, that's Brother Clifford. Brother Clifford. Oh, Brother Clifford, I know you. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm, excuse me for calling you by your government name. 
I was just, Brother Noah Muhammad, you're out there. Salam alaikum. Facts. Tanu Barry. Sister Samaya Ali. Salam alaikum. Okay, we wait, we're waiting, we're waiting on the calls. We're waiting on the the comments. Anyone else want to say something about Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad? I know you got your I know you got something to say. I want to thank Brother Victor from uh Washington, formerly, he's, he's originally from New York. He's from Washington, D.C., and um, he gives his greetings to everyone. And um, uh, Brother Eric J. Muhammad, thank you for sharing that video of Brother Hafiz. You know what? Until um, y'all get the courage to speak, I'm going to play this video one more time. Man born of a woman must one day soon die. So it don't make a difference if God gives us an extra 15 or 51. We come from eternity, we're going to return to eternity. But we got to make the best of the time we have here. And the best of the time is filling your mind, your heart, your spirit, your soul with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, culture, refinement, and the high signs of life, love, peace, and happiness. Such timely words from our brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Um, okay, well, let me talk then. So, um, uh, you know, I just want to say that I don't know of another student minister in the nation of Islam that has been tried and tested like brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Um, this brother uh, is, you know, a tried stone. And, you know, I watched it firsthand because, you know, I was always um, there, uh, you know, uh, in the mosque. I used to actually work in the mosque at some point. So I was always, um, you know, um, in, the, in the know, if you will. And, um, you know, uh, as, I, as, I, as I stated earlier, brother, brother Kevin at that time, he was the assistant minister for brother Abdul Allah Muhammad. And then when Brother Abdullah Muhammad uh, was moved to Chicago, um, uh, to, uh, uh, when, when we still had the Final Call building, some of you know Brother Abdullah Muhammad used to teach there. After he left New York, he was in Chicago helping the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, and Brother Abdul Hafiz would always be the interim minister. I mean, he was the interim minister for a long time before he became the minister of Mosque number seven. So I just want to sh tell you, you know, put yourself in his shoes. And, you know, to, the day is supposed to be what, the Passover or whatever? This man has been passed over. He is the Passover. Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad's life is the Passover because he's been passed over so many times for the position of minister that any man of less character would have been left the nation. And I've watched people leave the nation because they don't get the position that they think they should have had, but not Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. So he was the assistant minister for Abdullah. Then Brother, the, uh, brother Minister Farrakhan brought our international representative in, Brother, our, our elder statesman, you know, our beloved scholar who we love very, very dearly, who's still with us today, um, Brother Abdul Akbar Muhammad. And he was a great mentor to Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Yes, a great mentor to him, a great, you know, counselor and guide and teacher, firsthand, hands on with Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, Brother Abdul Akbar Muhammad, you know. And uh, so Brother, Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad at that time, he was still Brother Kevin, would function under Brother Abdul Akbar Muhammad. And Brother Akbar Muhammad would travel the world, okay? He would travel the world. So he would come teach, he would be in New York for like a month, and then he would disappear, you know? And he'll be in Ghana, he'll be, you know, that man traveled to every country on the planet Earth. You know, um, I think he said over 150 countries on Earth, you know, so he was always traveling. So, you know, he would come, and then he would go, you know what I'm saying? Come, stay with us for a season, you know, teach, 
and then go. And every time he left, guess who was in charge? Student, you know, Brother Minister Kevin, Assistant Minister Kevin. You know, so here, you know, this minister was picked, another, you know, uh, our elder, but, you know, this was a good match for him because he got a lot of guidance and a lot of teaching and a lot of training from Brother Abdul Akbar Muhammad. And, uh, you know, he would be the assistant and, and you know, and just carry the, the, you know, carry on the work, look over the mosque while Brother Abdul Akbar Muhammad would, would be out the country and he was always out the country. So finally... Um, uh, brother, uh, you know, Minister Farrakhan brought in the great Khalid Abdul Muhammad. So here it is, you know, uh, after assisting Abdullah, assisting Akbar Muhammad, here comes brother Khalid Abdul Muhammad. You see? So, uh, and you know, everybody know brother Khalid Abdul Muhammad was a great personality, galvanized the whole city. And, uh, and, you know, and brother, you know, Kevin just faded to the, you know, to, to the background and he would teach every now and then he would get a spot to teach and so forth, you know, once in a while. And he just hung in there. He just hung in there. So he went from, you know, holding it down, you know, after brother Akbar left to just being one of the assistant ministers, you know, and then our great brother Conrad came in at the time as a youth minister, you know? So, uh, so you had brother Khalid, you know, Abdul Muhammad, as the head minister, you had the, the youth minister, Brother Conrad Muhammad, and New York was jumping. So, um, so, and all this time, Brother, Brother, Brother Kevin Balafis was in the mix, but he wasn't, he wasn't out front, but he was in the mix. So, um, so after, you know, college time had, had passed, um, you know, uh, then the youth minister, Brother Conrad moved up, you see, um, and he was a great personality. I mean, brother, I mean, he still is, you know, um, I mean, he was uh, diplomatic, educated, well-spoken, um, class. I mean, the brother, uh, you know, I'm just being honest with you. A lot of us came from the street, you know, that brother brought class to the city. Captain Dennis came, you know, boom, you know, we had, we had like a, a high class type of leadership inside New York City because we was kind of rough around the edges. I'm not going to lie. You know, some of, you know, brothers come from Brooklyn. I came from the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? You know, we were just like, kind of like really, really rough around the edges. You know, even the way we dressed, we didn't dress sharp. You know, when, when, when Conrad came through, and Dennis came through, brother, we, man, FOI began to, you know, step our game up, you know. Um, so this was, this was another change for us. You know, it was another Another thing, so Brother Conrad became the minister, and, and once again, Brother Brother Kevin was in the mix. But here's where, you know, uh, Brother Abdul Hafiz made a great legacy for himself. So even though he didn't get that top spot, he was sent to Brooklyn. And what was very interesting, you know, because Brooklyn is where he's from, and, you know, there would be no... 7C today, if it was not for Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, there would be no 7C. And you could truthfully say that he is the pioneer and the founding father of 7C in the second rise. Because we tried to reopen 7D and it, it went, it functioned for a little while, it died. We tried to reopen the Bronx so many times, it would function for a little while. It died. We tried to reopen the, the temples on the mosque in, in Long Island, at, like we had in, during the time of the Army Elijah Muhammad. It would function for a little while. It died. But when Brother Minister Kevin at that time, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, was sent to Brooklyn, what was interesting, what was really interesting, was that one of the newer brothers at the time, I believe it was Brother Dalil, I believe it was Brother Dalil. He was shopping for a place for us to have uh, uh, a temple in, in, in Brooklyn, in 7C. And um, so he stumbled across a spot. Yes, sir. Well, like, uh, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to bring you on in a second. Give me, give me one second. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish a quick point. All right. And I'm, I'm going to bring you right on. So, um, so 
let, 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 let me uh, find a way to mute this. Okay. So um, uh, so he found a spot, a, a, a spot in Brooklyn, and it happened to be the same spot that we had before we moved to Harlem, 545 Gates Avenue. So I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to continue the story when the next time we have a gap. Brother James. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me turn you up. Okay, you're on, brother. Please share with us your great experiences, and I know you have many. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir, yeah, brother James, turn turn off the um, turn me off because there's a delay. Yes, yeah. You know, there's so many. Excuse me a second, brother. I'm, I'm working with my technology here, but um, um, well, listen, there's so much to say about um. Uh, okay, yes, sir. I'm trying to see. Hold on a second. Okay. That's better, much better. Yes, sir, pardon me. And may I say, uh, assalamu alaikum to you and to all believers and friends of, of Minister Hafiz that is mis listening to uh, us tonight. Uh, so much to be said about, brother. But I can tell you that my mind went to the very first time that I met brother, which was the, um, the, the day before he actually entered the mosque and became a part of our great brotherhood. We had a call out on a Saturday in Canarsie, um, hmm. him among a, a bunch of other um, brothers out of the 5% cent nation. And um, there was one particular brother whom, who, who was a, food of Islam, a member of the Food of Islam and was actually a classmate of mine in school, Brother Stephen, who had known these brothers in Canarsie. Uh, uh, and uh, Brother um, Kevin at the time was... I, Get his uh, righteous name at the time of the five percent. Tashim, one of I the believe. Young ones that he was um, telling us about. So we went out there on a call out and, and to invite them and just build. Um, it was it was ironic to me because it was really right around the corner from where I was born, and mm -hmm. so the connection was made. But here's what I would say to you when we first met, uh, brother, uh, uh, brother Hafiz. When you looked into his eyes, you seen that he had no fear. Mm. Listen to him speak. He was 17 years old, but he spoke mm. with such a maturity mm. and that you can see he had such a passion for supreme wisdom mm. that he was born to mm. really do this work. Mm. And mm. so from the moment he stepped into the mosque with his ultra confidence, and some mm. say he was brass, mm. uh, <laughs> but you just knew that there was going to be greatness coming out of him. Mm. And he didn't, he, didn't, he, he didn't prove us wrong mm. because... He excelled at every aspect of the training that we were receiving as FOI, mm. lockstep. Mm. And as a young man, you just knew. Mm. It, when they gave him the opportunity, I think um, Mr. Kareem, you know, opened up the, uh, the class to any of the brothers, mm. um, and even I think the sisters too, who wanted to be in the ministry. Mm. And it was no doubt he, when he opened up that mm. Hafiz, at the time Kevin and many mm. others, jumped in and joined ranks in the, in the ministry mm. and it worked hard, see? But even though he had the mind of a savant, mm. Mm. you knew something more. He had a, a passion and drive about him mm. that he was going to outwork you. That's right. It wasn't enough that he was just smarter than you. <laughs> but he was going to outwork you. Mm. And those traits is what allowed him to uh, display to us how to, um, you know, how, how, how to bear much how to go through all the trials that you were uh, alluding to mm. to get to the point where he evolved into the man mm. that we see today. Mm. Mm. And I can tell you for 40 years of knowing him and being his friend, mm. you know, of the quiet moments, the times mm. that we spent, you know, wee hours in the morning, mm. late hours at night, mm. you know, where we just connected as men. See, mm. he was a man's man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? A soldier's right. soldier. Mm. And he taught us and displayed how to be real Farrakhan's men. Mm. Mm. That's the example he showed. Mm. He showed us how to be loyal. Mm. He 
Mm. 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 So if you want to sit down with Ms. Harvey's, mm. you better bring the scholarship. If you want to debate with them, and you know, not that we, you've all seen this, but I've seen this. Right, that's right, and that's right. Politicians people try to challenge him with their pseudo knowledge, <laughs> and he just matches all of that fallacy and just deal with it. At the end of the conversation, they see that this man is not playing. <laughs> that's right. He was born for this. That's right. <laughs> So I had no problem. I've been in a situation with him. Just he and I, and we just on street corners mm. teaching. Mm. Just me and the minister. Mm. Mm. In the hood. Mm. Mm. And he disarms mm. people. Mm. You know? Mm. And um, of course, all of you know that mm. the kind of heart he had. Mm. Not many of us can bathe the bodies and prepare people for their, their last ceremony. Mm. And then teach the word, mm. you know, he did in terms of the heart mm. feeling so much heavy and being full of pain. Mm. And when you look up, everyone is laughing. They're walking out, out of the church, That's right. That's just right. hugging one another, That's right. just rejoicing in the life that they were just honoring. That's right. And I know our hearts are heavy because we don't have the opportunity at this moment to mm. do the same for him. That's right. That's right. You know, That's right. It's almost like he would have to come back to us. He might have to be resurrected just to do his own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to do it like him. Yes, yes. No so, one, brother. My heart is heavy. That's right. You know, um, That's right. And I'm still processing this. I'm not going to tell you. You know, I'm a soldier, soldier. That's right. So that's really the connection that you know, I had with him from the, the onset. That's right. And um, you know, no punk in him. Mm. You understand? Know that's right. That's right, you know, man. and listen, brother, I mean, the amount of time he put in to soldiering, he showed his commitment. That's right. You know, his faith. He showed us how to be faithful Muslims. That's right. He showed us how to be praying Muslims. Mm, that's right. You understand? That's right. And for that, I love him. I love him to life. Yes. Yes. He'll always be special to me, my mm. family. Mm. And he knows. I have a big family. He knows just about every single one of my children, mm. uh, my relatives, mm. and he's been there for me, and I've been there for him, man. Mm. And I will continue to be for, for, uh, there for him and his family. Mm. And his absence, I will make sure I'm there for his family. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I just like we 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 have a gem mm. that has been with us, mm. and for us to watch him evolve to. Become the man, the minister, and the, the, the just the guru that he has become. Mm. We should be awfully uh, proud and appreciative and thankful to Almighty God Allah mm. for being able to spend this moment in time with him. Right. And when history is written, he will be among the stars That's of right. heaven. That's right. You know, something this COVID 19 took him away from us. Mm. But if we look at it mathematically, as a brother shared with me yesterday, mm. he said COVID mathematically is when it comes to the number. 53. So I can mm. probably open up the garage to the 53rd mm. sort of the whole garage. Mm. I says, what is speed? Mm. It says, the star. Mm. And when it sets, mm. you see, we had a star among us. Mm. That's right. That's Was right. it recognized or not? That's right. That's right. You see, we got to just pray to Allah that that star that is in heaven, you know, mm. his spirit being placed in heaven, mm. you know, that the dragon, mm. which in the book, book talks about taking out at least a, a mm. third of the stars in heaven. Mm. Mm. One of our stars in heaven right mm. now. Mm. Mm. So I thank Allah for that soul. Mm. Uh, mm. You'll never be forgotten. Mm. No way, no how. Mm. No way, no how. Mm. You will Ever in my household, mm. and my children, my children mm. have been calling me about the minister. Mm. Mm. You mm. know what I'm saying? That's right. That's so, right. Listen, man. we just gotta, you know, do the work. But mm. since what he represented, he represented hard work. Mm. He was a blue collar minister. Mm. You know what I'm a blue collar mm. minister. That's right. That's right. That means he rolled up his sleeve and he went out to the streets. Mm. I know the sacrifices he made. Mm. Mm. Many times I was on the road with him. Mm. Mm. So I think, you know, uh, you know, may Allah bless us to, mm. you know, um, cherish the memories of him mm. and honor him by not forgetting that we have a responsibility to look after and securing his family. That's right. That's right. 
thank you, brother, for just allowing me to say those few words. Brother, thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother James, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, brother James, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Brother, uh, I, I think I turned him down accidentally. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother James. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. Did, did you want to say some more? Or are you good? I'm good. Yes, sir. Thank you, beloved. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, that's that's one of my big brothers also in the nation. I got a picture of you over here, brother James. Oh, it's, it's, man, I wish I could show it, brother. I got a picture of you in, from back from 86, brother. Yeah, <laughs> back from that time with the, the salute position, brother. I'm going to share that, inshallah. But yes, that's one of my big brothers. Remember, I, I came in when I, I became active. I was only 15, 16 years old. So this brother, Brother Sabir, that spoke earlier, Brother Abdul Hafiz, you know, I, I was just hanging out with the with my big brothers, you know, and they just took me under their, their wing, brother, and, and showed me the way. So, um, you know, so I, I so I got a chance to, to witness. Uh, I just wanted to say I got a chance to, to see firsthand Brother Abdul Hafiz's uh, struggle, you know, and and every everything, you know, that, you know, uh, he was, uh, not everything, but, you know, his, his being tried in the ministry, you know, him being passed over. And then, like I said, so there was, uh, 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 you know, Abdullah, uh, he was assistant minister, Akbar, he was assistant minister and a student under Akbar, you know, and a very good student and um, a good as assistant. And then, you know, came in Brother Khaled, Brother Conrad. But at that time, he was sent to Brooklyn. Uh, my brother, brother Shango. Assalamu alaikum. Well, alaikum, my brother. Well, alaikum salam, brother. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much, brother. And the, the floor is yours. Please share with us your wonderful experiences with our big brother, our beloved, now ancestor, brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with him. Thank you, brother Shango. Yes, sir. May Allah be pleased with our beloved minister, minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad who, you know, I knew as Brother Kevin, and then we would later on get that righteous thing that is well-deserved. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to be long, Brother. Um, I usually don't make calls like this. I usually, my way is to kind of just sit back and, 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 and mourn, for lack of a better word, quietly. Mm -hmm. But I felt compelled to speak about our brother. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to tell one story. That was very significant for me and very, very comforting for me during mm -hmm. the time of trial. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, brother, uh, I, I worked in the school system uh, for years mm -hmm. and was doing some work around really school reform and helping children yes, and things that nature and building the school for the community. And at some point in my, in my uh, tenure as a principal, mm -hmm. I was being attacked. Mm -hmm. by all kinds of forces. Mm -hmm. um, and the media just, I mean, <laughs> brother, they tried to bury, you know. <laughs> and um, at the time, mm -hmm. uh, brother uh, Minister Hafiz mm -hmm. was doing a program on, it was either, I think, Power 105 or High 97, mm -hmm. but he, was, he would give out these, um, uh, it was like a relationship, like mm -hmm. relationship, Mm. Right program where he would give advice, mm. yes, to, you yes, know, for, for people, and they would call him, what have mm. you. Mm. And at the time, all the major media in New York City had painted mm. me as a boogeyman. Mm. And my brother, not only did he bring me on his show, mm. I mean, true brother of him, he mm. changed the whole format of his show, mm. was supposed to be, uh, which was centered around a relationship theme, mm. and made it about how I was being attacked mm. and how he was supporting me. Mm. And, you know, we had we had an opportunity to have a lot of great conversations, mm. you know, behind the scenes. And he, he gave me a lot of counsel mm. in terms of how to deal with that situation. Mm. And I would just be forever grateful, mm. you know, that that in a time of severe trial, mm. he showed up not just as the minister, mm. but as a brother mm. and used his platform, used his platform of mm. reaching how many, I don't know how many millions of people he was reaching every week mm. to counter 
mm. what the enemy was doing mm. in terms of trying to destroy me. Mm. And so, so that was the story I wanted to tell. One just last thing I have to say, mm. uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about when we greeted uh, uh, Brother Mr. Abdullah Peace big bear hugs. <laughs> 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 he grabbed you, was so warm, that you felt like you were being squabbled up. That's right. Friend, that's right. Friend, that's right. Friend, that's right. Friend, that's right. You know, that's right. Just like, just, just <laughs> up his presence, you know, and I just think that that's a reflection yes. of, you know, who he, who yes. he was in terms of being a warm spirit, even though he was mm-hmm. being a statue. Yes. Humble in practice yes. and just loving. Yes. And um, you know, that's you know, he really exemplified what brotherhood is, you know, yes. because um, you know, he didn't have to take that aspect of what he was doing, which was outside of the ministry, mm-hmm. and give him a platform to literally come back mm-hmm. and count what mm-hmm. the enemy was trying to do mm-hmm. in front of the strong. Mm-hmm. So I just so thank you for that brother. He was an institution. Yes, um, yes. you know, you know, we know, we know, brother Elijah. We grew up. That's right. Up that's right. Men, that's know, right. Mr. Conrad, Mr. Khaled, that's right. You know, Mr. Aqua. We were all kind of like we all grew up. So it's that's really right. Really of the government. That's right. And so as dead, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. They live, but we perceive that. So we know he lives that's right. in another way. That's right. But I'm thinking in terms of that physical presence. That's right. That's a big piece of who we were as young Muslims coming up. That's right. So that's, that's right. what I have to say. That's my story. Yes, sir. Um, love you, brother. And man, so love you too. Love you too. Thank you. Thank you, brother Shango. Brother, the great brother Shango, brother, uh, revolutionized uh, the educational system. Um, he was he was doing so much good that they had to throw him out. You know, every school he sent, every school they sent him into, he would turn it around. You know, and until they set him up and they attacked him, as he as you told him, and our brother, our big brother, our big brother, our defender. You know, you know the the head of our household, man, uh, Moss Number Seven, man. He came, brought the brother on a platform before millions of people and defended our brother. Uh, in the public, and he was under vicious attack in the Daily News and, and, and uh, you know, New York Post and all these uh, major media outlets, man. Brother Shango was under attack, and our brother came to the defense of his little brother and, and you know, and our, our great educator in the community. Brother Shango, thank you so much, brother, for sharing that part of the, the great history of Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Thank you so much, beloved. Uh, yes, sir. Wa alaikum salam. So, um, Anyone else, just call on in. It's open. The, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just go into your inbox. Uh, type in my name, Elijah Shabazz. If you're, you're friends with me on Facebook, my name will come up. Or, or just hit message on my, my page, uh, facebook.com forward slash Elijah Shabazz Ba. Facebook.com forward slash Elijah Shabazz Ba. You go to my page, you hit message, and you send me a message. I, If you're not friends with me, I add you on Messenger, and you can join the conversation, okay? So um, uh, uh, so I, I wanted to, to finish just saying I know those of you in Brooklyn could tell this story way better than me because I was from the outside looking in. I was uptown looking looking towards Brooklyn, but... Um, uh, Brother Hafiz, I say again, is the founding father of Mas Number no. Seven C in the second rise of the Nation of Islam. Because again, as I said, uh, under under the leadership of Brother Conrad Muhammad, we had um, opened up study groups in other other boroughs, but none of them survived. None of them are still standing. But Seven C has been standing since Brother uh, Brother Kevin at that time, Abdul Hafiz, was sent to Seven C when Brother. Uh, student minister Conrad was our minister up in Harlem and he built 7C. He built 7C into a strong community uh, under his leadership, under his leadership, under his uh, work ethic, under his example, under his, uh, like Brother James uh, uh, Muhammad said, 
you know, um, James Muhammad 14, as he just said, he said, our, our brother Hafiz always wanted to outwork you. You see what I mean? So, you know, he would just go out in the field and he built Brooklyn up and Brooklyn has not fallen since because brother Abdul Hafiz laid a strong foundation in Brooklyn, a strong foundation in, in Brooklyn. 7C stand up. And I, you know, I love 7C. I still go to 7C, but I, I know I always, always have it in my mind. This, this would not still exist if it wasn't for the foundation laid. And this is not to take away nothing from nobody. You know, a lot of brothers put in work out there in Brooklyn, but we know that brother, you know, what brother Abdul Hafiz did at the initial stage gave Brooklyn a strong foundation. So, you know, we, we thank Allah uh, for his work out there. And then when finally, after brother Conrad, there was uh, Minister Ben, formerly Ben Chavis of um, the NAACP. He was the, the minister in, in Harlem after Brother Conrad. He had, he had a, uh, you know, his time. And then finally, finally, after the Passover, this is the Passover, after he was passed over so many times, finally, finally, he became the New York representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Baraka. Oh, man, I can't. He was so happy, and I was happy for him. I was happy for him because he deserved it long time ago. And I'm sure he felt that way, and I'm sure a lot of people who watched him go through his trials and tribulations, they were like, okay, finally. It was like he arrived, finally. And he was the New York representative. And some of y'all might have thought he was being arrogant when he was, you know, he made sure that you knew I am the New York representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, but I understood because he paid such a price. He paid over a decade, no, yeah, at least a decade of sacrifice before he finally got that, that post and position, and he was on that post longer than any minister in the nation of Islam, in the history of the nation of Islam, Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, longer than Malcolm X, Longer than even the Honorable Minister was Farrakhan. Brother Conrad was the longest before him, you know. And but Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad has held that position longer than any person and then graduated, graduated to be the East Coast Regional Representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So when he said that title and he said it with pride, that's because he truly, and I bear witness, he truly, truly earned that title. It wasn't like one of those, you know, there were some ministers that like, okay, they just had talent and they got it, or got a position because they had talent. You see what I mean? It's like, oh brother, I, I think you go good here. They, they didn't pay no price. You know what I'm saying? They just happen to be gifted speakers and they get the position. They didn't have to pay a price. But Abdul Hafiz Muhammad paid the price <laughs> for every position. And I seen it firsthand. And all y'all out there, you know, he paid a dear price. He didn't get he didn't get nothing easy. You see, that man didn't get nothing easy. So that's why when he every time he get on that radio and he speak, he let you know what his title and position is. You know, and again, I never seen it as arrogance. I just seen it as, hey, man, I paid, I gave my life for this price, man. And he got it. And he 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 was the embodiment, the embodiment of what you would call a pastor, you know, what you would call a guide, a, a shepherd, as Brother Shango said, how he would just give you a hug and you, you know, his embrace just overtakes you with love and warmth. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's who he was. He was the father of the, of the family, man. He, you know, he was a, you know, even though we see him as a big brother, but he was the anchor of our household and, um, you know, and, uh, um, he's going to be greatly, 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 uh, he is greatly missed already. And uh, may Allah bless us with a, a portion of his spirit. Every single one of us who was touched by him, may Allah bless us with a portion of his spirit to keep his work on, to keep that, that loving presence in the house and to keep the guidance and the, the, you know, the ability to solve disputes among the believers. May Allah give us each a portion of what he gave to us. Uh, give us a portion of the ability to hold a janazah. I was I was thinking today, like, how, 
how did he say this? You know, he would he would do the gymnastics, he would have the peppermint, and he would say, you know, but he would say it so beautifully. I can't even try. You know, he said the crackling of the paper is the like the birth of the baby, and and when you suck on the mint, it's like you know the the, the person, and you 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 you. I don't know how he said it. Like you drinking in the the soul of the person, and and then the, the 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 mint, just like the mint disappears, but the sweetness of the person still remains on your mouth. Oh man! I mean, people would come to Islam just from going to a janaza service. The way he would, you know, teach on this 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 peppermint. How he could take something simple like a peppermint and convert somebody to Islam. Oh, praise is due to Allah for our brother. Abdul Hafiz Muhammad. Anybody else? Anybody else? I, like I said, I could, I could talk about this, brother. You know, the whole program. Please call in. Uh, drop your comments. Uh, give us your stories. Don't be shy. You don't have to go on camera. You don't have to go on camera if you just want to call in and, and just, you don't have to turn your camera on. Just give us an audio uh, representation of, of how Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad has touched your life. Um, you know, we, we, we would love to to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. Um, you know, so uh, uh, let me say we have a, a brother he, who's learning about Brother Abdul Afis Muhammad is Barry Kopulo. He's a, uh, from West Africa, but he's in, in France, I believe. Oh, I'm not sure. He said, my brother, I am proud of you. I have a question for how many people like you uh, come from Futa Jala. Oh, he has a, he has a Fulani question. I'm sorry. Uh, that's the, the wrong video, brother. <laughs> uh, this is about Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, the East Coast Regional Representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Adams D. Pulo, can I participate, brother? Yes, you can participate. Did you send me a request here? Uh, this is one of our brothers from West Africa. He wants to participate in the program. Okay. So, anyone else? Salam alaikum, Sister Jamila. <laughs> yeah, that's my sister. That's my actual biological sister. Brother Tariq, you out there? Come on, Brother Tariq. Don't leave me hanging, brother. You know, don't, don't, don't have me up here talking by myself. <laughs> call, call on there. Brother Khalid, salam alaikum. Brother Khalid said he did my father's janazah prayer service perfectly. All praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, Brother Khaled. Brother Khaled, I know you got something to say, brother. Call me on Messenger. Come on, Brother Khaled. I know you're out there. Brother Robert Shabazz, his sense of humor also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We all know Brother Hafiz's sense of humor, brother. The brother would just have us laughing, and we'll just be like, you know, even though he, he was the minister, but we just never seen him like that. He was just our big brother, you know what I'm saying? And he would just come, uh, you know, wherever we are, if we were having our little discussion, he would come in and join into the discussion and, you know, give some wisdom, add some humor to it. You know, um, uh, he was, he was, he was, he's a part of all of our families. He's a part of all of our families. You know, and you go to any household of believers of mosque number seven, brother Hafiz is a family member to all of us. Come on, y'all call on in, call on in, tell your stories. Tell your stories. Brother Arthur Muhammad, brother, brother Arthur Muhammad, salam alaikum, beautiful testimony, beloved. Brother Arthur, I want to hear your testimony, beloved. If you're out there, please call in, brother Arthur Muhammad. I, I, I feel so tempted to pick up the messenger and call you. <laughs> I would love for you to call in, brother, brother, brother student minister, uh, Arthur Muhammad. Come on, brother. Please, y'all, don't leave me out here by myself. I, I could talk, but y'all come on and help me out. Call me on Messenger. Uh, who else? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Sister Leah Shabazz, salam alaikum. I see you out there. Over in Ojala, Sister Eric. Okay, okay. I'm waiting on y'all. I'm waiting. Mark Winkler, come on. Come on. So, yes. So, uh, I'll just keep talking for now. So, Brother Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, as I, you know, I, I, I shared earlier, he was our core dean. You know, he was the, he was our judge. Um, you know, when I was sick in 2018, um, I mean, he called me constantly. You know, I, I didn't, 
I mean, I knew he loved me. I didn't know. I, I, he really, really gave me so much love and he really, really helped me to heal. You know, every time I received a call from him, it would just, it would just warm my heart. You know, um, it would, it would just make me, it was like a, a, a heal. His voice was like healing. And, um, you know, and unfortunately we weren't able to do that for him. We were, you know, given instructions like, you know, to let him rest and not to call him. So, you know, we weren't able to return that favor. And, um, but, you know, when I was sick, you know, when I was in the hospital, he was there for me. You know, he would call me like, Brother Elijah, what are they saying? What is the diagnosis? You know, how you feeling, beloved? You know, uh, give me an update. He kept calling me like, give me an update on your your health status, Brother Elijah. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, send, me, send me documents. I need documents, you know. Um, even when I got out and went to visit, um, you know, he was, he was on the phone with me as I was, I was going in to, to get my, my checkup. And, you know, he, I mean, he was with me, um, uh, through the whole process, you know, just constantly calling me and, 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 you know, while I was in the hospital and, and, you know, like I said, just checking on me, checking on me. I mean, I mean, he gave me so much love and, you know, he, he led prayers for me when I was sick. Uh, at the mosque, you know, he, you know, he lifted my name up and, uh, you know, and they, you know, offered prayers, you know, all praises due to Allah for our brother, Abdul Hafiz Muhammad, you know, and when I, I finally came out to show you how much love this, this brother had. And again, he's like a court He's like a judge because I don't always understand. This is Minister Brother Arthur Muhammad. Thank you so much. I am so honored. So, so honored, brother. That you 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 called in to share some words, brother. Brother, I am so honored. Thank you so much, brother. The the floor is yours. Let me make sure your volume's up. So so glad to hear from you. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness. There is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is His messenger, brother. As I'm scrolling uh, through through my Facebook, and I see you, brother, fired up with the spirit testifying about my brother, <laughs> I could not, you know, not <laughs> respond and, and say thank you for this. Pretty our hearts are so heavy, man, in yes. New York City. Yes. No matter what capacity that we work with our dear brother, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I first met Minister Hafiz in October of 1988. Mm -hmm. I went to Savior's Day uh, as a member of the Zulu Nation, and this is when the mosque was purchased, Mosque Marianne was purchased, but it had not been dedicated. Mm -hmm. So they had Savior's Day under the tent, mm -hmm. and it was there that I first saw Brother Hafiz. Mm -hmm. I was so fired up by the Savior's Day experience. Mm -hmm. They said that the mosque was at 2033 Fifth Avenue in Harlem. Mm. So I went the next uh, week, mm. and I heard a brother, tall brother, uh, named Kevin X, <laughs> and I, he, I, you know, I could not wait for him to say, who wants to join? <laughs> and so when he said that, I joined, and by 1989... I, I, he asked me. This is this this is a true story. Mm. Actually, it was it was uh, early 1990. He asked me to be his assistant minister, mm. and I accepted. Mm. And and three weeks after that, Minister Farrakhan installed Khalid Abdul Muhammad mm. as the New York minister. Mm. So my my lived. Mm. Though, uh, and, and then, of course, you know, I became a lieutenant after that. And, uh, mm. I uh, reunited with, with Minister Hafiz on his ministry staff mm. when he returned back seven mm. in uh, 2001 mm. after Benjamin uh, Chavis Muhammad. Mm. And uh, for the last 10 years, I, I've been his assistant minister. And uh, I thank Allah for that brother. Mm. He knew how to push my buttons. <laughs> he knew how to drive me. He knew how to get the best out of me. And um, will surely be missed. Yeah. I, I have his voice mm. in 
my head. Mm. I, mm. I have I have his mm. instructions in mm. my head, mm. and when I need to um, to, to to confer, mm. and I I wonder what a best practice is. Mm. I hear his voice. Mm. Come on, brother, mm. do as you see me do, brother. Mm. That's right. Come on, brother, we did this before, brother. You know, and 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 um, what a man, and and, and mm. brother. Mm. I saw this brother. He he was not mm. the most formally educated brother. Mm. Mm. He used to struggle with his verb and his noun agreement in mm. his early days. Mm. Mm. But he is what I call a self-educated man. That's right. Self-determined. That's right. And you could see his growth and mm. development over the years. And I mm. got to appreciate him mm. to the point where, you mm. know, he's on Power 105. On the Ed Lover show, giving um, relationship advice mm. to 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 the hip hop community. Mm. Mm. Then he had his own show on mm. Power 105, and when they went through management change, yes. that changed. And then he is here. He is on WBLS, mm. you know, talking political, social mm. action, mm. you know, every uh, a month. Mm. With with the most noted scholars and activists in mm. our city, mm. and talking politics, mm. you know, and and hanging in there mm. at the same time representing mm. the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, right. he was an unashamed mm. follower. Mm. He mm. was not ashamed. That's right. That's right. That's you understand? Right. That's right. He 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 didn't have a That's side right. job. That's right. He didn't have a competing interest. <laughs> He didn't have it twisted, like you said. Mm -hmm. I am the New York Mm. The longest standing mm. 
student minister mm, in right. the history that's right. of the nation of Islam. That's right. That's right. His light will shine that's right. that's forever. Right. Right. I, I propose mm. that his picture be put up next to the great yes, Abdul Kareem yes, Muhammad sir. Yes, sir. and the vestibule of Mosque yes, number sir. seven yes, sir. never to be taken down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us pray for Sister Larray, his yes, wife, sir. and his children. Yes, yes. That the sacrifice, you know, brother, look. Yes. Look at yes. this, brother. Mm -hmm. Brother, brother mm -hmm. was so active, mm -hmm. traveled so much, mm -hmm. sometimes would mm -hmm. teach three or four places, especially in the summer on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have to prepare a subject. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe his wife got, uh, mm. you know, some pillow time, mm. you know, but didn't get a good conversation because mm. we had him all during the morning and mm. all during the day. Mm. And by the time he would go home to his home in Long Island, he would be so exhausted mm. having to get up in the morning. Mm. She sacrificed a, mm. a, a, a relationship. Mm. You know, that the average woman would want with a man, but that just shows you the mm. testament of a believing woman mm. who knows that her man has a mission. And I'm mm. not going to take up any more of your time, brother, brother. Mm. but I just wanted to say thank you. And let mm. us keep Sister Larray and brother, yes. Minister yes. Abdul Hafiz and his family in our prayers. Thank yes. you for having this forum. Brother, May thank Allah you. continue to bless you. I mean, I mean, wa alaikum salam. Thanks, salam alaikum, brother. Thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate this, brother, student minister Arthur. Thank you for the good news that you gave to us. You know, the Quran says, bring good news to the believers. And we all had a heavy heart wondering whether our brother was going to have a janazah. And uh, even though we are not a all able to attend, but the fact that he's going to have a decent Muslim burial, brother, thank you so much for that news. I'm sure that's good news for everyone. You know, that that definitely well, settles me, my me, heart, let me, brother. Let me just share this with you. Yes, sir. Um, because of the COVID-19 mm -hmm. coronavirus, yeah. um, they, they have restrictions mm -hmm. on what can be done with all, all funeral homes have restrictions. Mm -hmm. And there, there are two options. Mm. There's one which is a cremation. And of course, as Muslims, we don't put fire to the body. Mm. That's meant for the wicked. Fire mm. is promised for the wicked, mm. not for the righteous. Mm. But because of the virus and there's restrictions, because, you know, the virus can be active even in, a, uh, in the remains. Mm. Uh, uh, so, so therefore, you know, the traditional way that we wash and wrap the body right, right. may not happen right. because of the safety mm. of those who are doing it. You know, mm. there, there's the CDC and the New York State uh, mm. uh, Department of Health have these tremendous mm. regulations. And if the funeral home is not set up with a special quarantine and cleaning mm. and a, a higher level of PPE, mm. uh, you know, capability, that might not happen. Right. However, mm. prayers will be made yes. over yeah. his casket yeah. in our way. Yeah. So there will be a janaza in that way. Yes. And we will give, we will give um, an announcement in about two, no more than three days. Praise be to Allah. Well, inshallah, they can make some type of modified way to wash the body, even if it's from a distance, even if you have to put on five extra gloves, a hazmat suit, you know, you know, inshallah, you know, we could work something out. You know, um, I'm just putting the ideas out there. Uh, inshallah, we could work something out where we, we, he could still be washed um, in the Muslim way. Uh, without uh, putting anyone in the danger of, of catching the, the COVID-19. Brother, but again, thank you so much for sharing that information, you know, and it's, it's just good to know that he, he will have a Janazza service, uh, you know. Yes, soon. he will, brother. Yes, Prayers sir. will be made yes, sir. over our beloved brother yes, sir. the same way that he did, All you know, yes, uh, yes, yes. Hundreds. Hundreds, hundreds. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, hundreds. yes. yes. Of yeah. believers, yes, brother. Yes. Hundreds of believers. Yes.
Yes. And even and even our family members who weren't believers, he he would come and do the Janazah service or the funeral service for for family members of the believers and, and people of the community. Yes, sir. That yes, is sir. correct. That's right. That is correct. And yes, sir. Let me say this. He was yes, foremost mm -hmm. in the nation of Islam mm -hmm. in funerals mm -hmm. and in weddings. Yes. Foremost. Foremost. Wow. Hands down. Hands down. That's right. That's right. Hands down. That's right. That's right. Brother, That's brother, right. brother, may Allah continue to bless you. Brother. I mean, I mean, brother, may Allah continue to bless you too. Our brother, student minister, brother Arthur Muhammad, thank you so much. Wa alaikum salam. May Allah bless you and the family, and your beautiful wife, sister Nichelle, the children. Brother, thank you so much for calling in. It's really, really, brother, you don't know how much I appreciate this, brother. Thank you so much, brother, student minister Arthur. Yes, sir. Uh, brother, brother Rudy Muhammad, I see you have been trying to call in. But Brother Arthur was live. Uh, if you want to call in right now, or do you want me to call you? Let me see. Um, let me see. Brother Rudy was trying to call in when Brother Student Minister Arthur was speaking. This is Brother Rudy Muhammad. Uh, he has, you know, been on the security detail for our beloved Honorable Minister of Spirit. Brother Rudy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Salam alaikum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I couldn't answer your call because we were live with Brother Student Minister Arthur, uh, but I saw that you were calling in, so I called you back. So um, so uh, I was just telling them about you, how, how you're a brother that, that worked closely with our beloved leader and teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, um, and, but you are originally here from New York City. I think you were a teenager when you came in, right? Weren't you in high school when you first came in the nation? And you know... <laughs> 16 years old, just like me. You know, we, we, we were young brothers, teenagers. And, and, and like I said, Brother Abdul Hafiz has been our big brother. I'm going to let you share your story, brother. You are on. Brother, please, you know, the floor is yours, beloved. Brother Rudy Muhammad. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, family. Wa alaikum, salam. In the name of Allah, I've been ever since the merciful. There is no God.